Good morning, my friends. Welcome to morning prayer on behalf of Church of the Ascension in Chicago, Illinois. Today, the church commemorates John Mason Neal, an Anglican priest who lived from 1818 to 1866. Just a bit about John Mason Neal. Due to chronic ill health, he was unable to continue as a parish priest, but became a warden of Sackville College, a charitable residence for the poor. He was known for his gentleness combined with firmness, good humor, modesty, patience, devotion, and unbounded charity. He wed piety with compassionate social action and founded the Sisterhood of St. Margaret for the relief of suffering women and girls. Although he was persecuted by church authorities for his supposed Anglo-Catholic uh, bent on the liturgy, he also uh, compiled a great number of religious tracts, uh, commentaries on the Psalms, and even hymns that we sing to this day. So let us remember John Mason Neal, truly an inspiring man in our Anglican heritage. Today we will be praying Psalm 88 on page 712. We'll be using Canticle 10 on page 86 and Canticle 16 on page 93. And as always, you are welcome to follow along in the app called Venite, V-E-N-I-T-E dot A-P-P. -P. You can use it as an app or a website on your computer. I really enjoy the apps and embrace them. I know a lot of people like to use the physical book, and I understand that. Uh, but I like the apps. It makes it easy and accessible for me. If I'm on the bus or traveling, I can just pull it up on the app, and there it is in real time. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 88 O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you, let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. 
I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me, You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will wonders be known in the dark? or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten. But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all the day like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put away from me. My darkness is my only companion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. Now Abimelech, son of Jerubal, went to Shechem to his mother's kinfolk, and said to them and to all the whole clan of his mother's family, Say, in the hearing of all the lords of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy sons of Jerubal rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. So his mother's kinfolk spoke all these words on behalf in the hearing of all the lords of Shechem, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they had said, He is our brother. They gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the temple of Baal Berith, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. He went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubal, seventy men on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, survived, for he had hid himself. Then all the lords of Shechem 
and all at Beth Milo came together, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of the mount of Mount Gerizim, and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you lords of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. The olive tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my rich oil by which gods and mortals are honored and go to sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my sweetness and my delicious fruit and go to sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I stop producing my wine that cheers gods and mortals and go to sway over the trees? So all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you acted in good faith and honor when you made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt with well with Jerubal and his house, and have done to him as his actions deserved, if, as you say, you have acted in good faith and honor with Jerubal and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the lords of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from the lords of Shechem, and from Beth Milo, and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham ran away and fled, going to Beir, where he remained for fear of his brother Abimelech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is it? What concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee. And he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there for a few days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, this is Jesus's first miracle. Turning the water into wine. But the thing is, as miracles go, this is a pretty minor miracle. <laughs> After all, really any any magician at the time could have pulled this off. But there is a deeper meaning here. And with the Gospel of John, there is always a deeper meaning. After Mary tells the waiters to follow Jesus' instructions, she says, do whatever he tells you. We find that Jesus has told them to fill these huge stone jars with water and to fill them to the brim. And here's the deeper meaning. These stone jars were used for ceremonial washing and were now filled to the brim with wine. They were now rendered useless for these rites of purification. In other words, the old covenant was no longer needed. The new covenant had come, the coming of the kingdom, the beginning of it. So this was not merely Jesus' way of supplying wine for a wedding, but it signified the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom. Of course, I've, as I've said several times before, the motto for my religious community in Latin is quod cum quod dixere vobis facite. Do whatever he tells you. We meditate on this at the beginning of the day. Do whatever he tells you and meditate. What would you have me to do? And usually I get an answer, especially if I'm going over a problem that I'm dealing with. But the thing is, I get that answer as long as my intent is out of love for others. If I'm asking what can I do for others, I get that answer as long as I enter into the kingdom of God. A kingdom in which the poor will be blessed, the mourners will be comforted, the meek will inherit the earth, 
Those who hunger for righteousness will be satisfied and the peacemakers will be satisfied. Uh, the peacemakers will be favored and the persecuted will inherit the kingdom of heaven. So I invite you to try it. Seek that answer to do whatever he tells you. Seek it with the kingdom of heaven in mind. Seek it with love. Canticle 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and had their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have been redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation. A kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne. And to Christ the Lamb. Be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day Grant, O God, that in all times of our testing we may know your presence and obey your will, 
that following the example of your servant, John Mason Neal, me, we may with integrity and courage accomplish what you give us to do and endure what you give us to bear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this concludes morning prayer for today. I hope and pray that you will have a happy and peaceful and productive Friday. And just a reminder, tomorrow on Saturday, we will be praying morning prayer from right one in the traditional language for those of you who enjoy that. May the peace of Christ be with you all today. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day.